Ladies and gentlemen, in the one day and a half meetings, we have talked about the development of automotive logistics uh, on the international market. And also this morning, we talked about the import and export of China's automotive industry. I'm sure that you can feel that in the recent few years, um, we see a lot of changes happening. On one hand, we see technology surging ahead. We have welcomed a new round of um, industrialization, technological revolution. Uh, we have proposed uh, Made in China 2025, and the U.S. have proposed uh, to bring back um, manufacturing to the U.S. Um, cutting edge technologies have achieved great progress in many different industries, and they have deeply influenced the traditional landscape and also the traditional business model and ways of production. And in among all these industries, the automotive industry is especially um, standing out. And in today's meeting, we have talked about um, the future of China's automotive industry, especially new energy vehicle. Their production will definitely pose new challenges to the original material management. So logistics uh, definitely is the key. And what will be the future of logistics look like? In the middle of all this emerging economy, especially China, in the face of new technological progress proposed by developed countries, have proposed their own uh, responses. In last year's 19th Party Congress, the Chinese government has proposed to create a modern supply chain. The application of supply chain in automotive industry um, is the earliest and also the most advanced compared with the rest of the other industries. What are some of the new trends that we have observed? Um, we see another round of new globalization. Um, emerging economies, especially China, have been expanding their opening to the outside world. In the Boao Forum that have just concluded not so long ago, President Xi Jinping promised to China on behalf of the country that China will only open its door even further to the outside world. In addition, in Europe and also in the U.S., protectionism is on the rise, and f trade friction um, has become a more serious concern. Um, a very hot topic is uh, U.S. limitation on the sales of chip from ZET to the U.S. Uh, as globalization, so is globalization continuing or is globalization shrinking? And also how far the Belt and Road Initiative can go. Um, today, we talk about the development of automotive logistics under the context of Belt and Road Initiative. This morning, we'll have speakers who talked about CR Express. A lot of people are very interested to see how, for how long CR Express can continue. Some have proposed that the stability, um, political stability in China will help CR Express. But will a market factor kick in? because right now CR Express still relies heavily on subsidies. As subsidies reduce, will CR Express start a new round of technological you know, uh, revolution? Will it lead new changes? So these are the topics we'll discuss this afternoon. Um, we will have three areas of discussion. Uh, we have production manufacturers. Also, we have logistics service providers. Um, we, we have also um, CR Express representative, uh, which is definitely the fruit of China's Belt and Road Initiative. Uh, what role railway should play and what expectations we have of railway. I think these are the issues a lot of us are interested in. Um, so now I would like to introduce to the stage um, our panelists who will share with us their view. First of all, from Jianghuai, uh, Mr. He Yong, in charge of international logistics, and also from BYD, Madam Kang Yan, manager of import and export, and from Brilliance BMW, Matthias. This is also the only foreign panelist we have um, this afternoon. Um, he will share with us the impact of um, U.S. trade war on Brilliance BMW. And also we have Madam Wei Rui, 
followed by an old friend of ours, Mr. Zhongcheng from China Railway Container Transport Corp. And the sixth panelist, because this meeting is held in Chengdu, so from Chengdu Railway Group, Weibo, followed by Liu Chang, President Assistant from Shanghai Zhengming Modern Logistics. And last but not least, uh, we have an industry expert. General Secretary, China Automotive Logistics Association of CFLP. Um, the organizers are inconsiderate um, because now I'm going to return to my seat. Um, so please speak in the order um, that I've caught you here. Um, we will have a few questions that I raise and then please share with your, your view um, one by one. And then I will open the stage to the audiences. So if you have any question then, uh, please feel free to raise um, questions and uh, you can um, designate a panelist to answer your question or you can ask all of them to share their view on your question. So just now we've talked about how technological progress has impacted the industry and also globalization, how globalization has um, changed corporate structure and all of those um, are related to supply chain and logistics. So could you please um, share with us based on your understanding, based on your knowledge, um, how is technology changing and how is that affecting your sales? Um, and what is your model of logistics that you're using? That's the first question. And the second round of the question, um, I will ask about some prominent problems that you currently have in production and also in logistics. This could be global question. Uh, this could be global pro problems. This could also be China specific. Um, this could be problems um, from logistics service providers, or this could be from uh, about railway, because we also have two representatives in railway. Um, and also, what expectations do you have of China's railway? And the last round of questions, uh, we will look to the future and see um, and, and t get your take on uh, what the future outlook will be. So now I would like to invite uh, Mr. He, who will share with us uh, their situation in Jianghuai. Um, so please pass on your microphone. Um, now, please pass the microphone to Mr. He. Good afternoon. My name is He Yong from Jianghuai Automotive. And my job is to um, support logistics for Jianghuai's import and export. Jianghuai is a domestic brand in China. Actually, in 2001, we started exporting our products. When we first started exporting, we had very small quantity for export. So at first, we used a small trade company. Uh, we would find an agency or representative to help us handle the cargoes. Um, but as we expand um, our export as of 2017, our export um, ranked number four in China. We have um, exported a total of 65,000 vehicles. And as we export more, and also the products that we exported have also become more diversified from vehicle to SKD and also CKD model, we have changed our model of um, export. So that means the requirement our clients has um, in terms of logistics have also become more strict. So now uh, we, what we want to achieve, achieve is the OEM will be the one that mainly controls and coordinates the logistics. So unlike uh, the traditional trade company model where we will find a representative or an agency, we want to be involved in all the sections involved in international logistics, for example, get in touch with the port, uh, government authorities, customs, inspection. 
And also, we have changed from about uh, 80 to 90 percent as FOB to promoting CFR for clients, GDP and GDU for clients. And also, we have increasingly felt um, the lower costs of logistics. Um, actually is an additional source of revenue for our sales. And we have really felt the benefits from this. That is why we take this very seriously um, throughout the company. So that's my take on this issue. Thank you. Good afternoon. I'm from BYD. I'm in charge of export. Maybe let me remind you once again. Um, people may know about BYD car but may, may not know the whole picture of BYD Group. BYD is a company that comprises of IT, railway, new energy, and automobile. It's a high-tech company. Based for IT, uh, we have manufactured parts for cell phones and uh, um, laptop, and assembled cell phone and laptop. For automobile, commercial, passengers. For commercial vehicles, we have a specialty vehicles and also the uh, buses. Besides uh, new energy vehicles, we also have a uh, solar cell storage and also LED products uh, and a forklift. For railway, in 2016 October, we also developed um, our own rail tracks, which uh, uh, garnered favorable feedback. As the theme of our conference is uh, automotive and logistics, we would like to talk about our automotive part. We have uh, several core technologies, for example, for drivers and electric um, batteries, as well as finished car assemblies. We are also experienced in marketing and sales and promotion of the vehicles, starting from 2008. We already export our cars overseas. Right now, we know uh, you, you know that the F3DM and uh, uh, K9 and also Dynasty series are all the famous new energy vehicles. Also, we have uh, an upgraded version, premium version that we work with Daimler. Uh, we were one of the first ones to initiate the um, electrification of uh, tra public transport. And also, our export network goes to six continents and 60 countries and 20, 240 cities with uh, products such as uh, the finished vehicles and the CKD, SKD. because we have our own brand and we manufacture lots of our own parts. But of course, at the same time, we have to import testing equipment, manufacturing equipment, and other parts. Currently, we uh, go through Shanghai and Qingdao port, including Guangdong, Shenzhen ports. This is the overall picture of BYD. Thank you. OK, just now you, uh, you said that what's the export volume? for BYD. Last year, uh, uh, together, we had over 10,400. Uh, 10, for a commercial vehicle, we, have, uh, we had 500. In 2018, we aim to hit 200,000 for passenger car and 1,000 for commercial cars. Thank you. My name is Matthias Lüttich, uh, representing uh, BMW Brilliance, the joint venture. I'm the head of uh, production strategy. And uh, as you can see, and as uh, we have heard already in a few uh, presentations, our situation is, of course, a little bit different. Um, the, the joint venture will celebrate this year the 15th anniversary and uh, was, of course, uh, all the years uh, pretty much focused just on the local Chinese market. Uh, nevertheless, two to three years ago, we started uh, a first export uh, enabling project together with our BMW group uh, colleagues, um, which was finally launched at, at the beginning of this year. Uh, the one series sedan um, is exported uh, from China. 
And uh, yeah, from our standpoint, this is so far an enabling project. Uh, many people think uh, that producing export models might be a challenge for production, but it's uh, definitely not like that. Basically, most challenges are behind in the administrative pro processes to set everything up. So that's why um, we want for any kind of opportunity for the future, just prepare to be able to maybe at some point of time extend that as well. So that's why it's an enabling project with very small volumes. Um, in the future, we'll see how we continue. Thank you, Matthias. Uh, a brief introduction. I'm from Dajon Import Cars. My name is Wen Rui. I know many of you here. All of you are smiling, smiling at me, and I know because uh, I'm worked in Volkswagen for five years and BMW for eight years, and also JAC is uh, our third uh, biggest company, and also Matthias is, was my old uh, company uh, boss. So. Uh, our company is the wholly owned subsidiary of uh, Volkswagen. We are responsible for the importation of uh, the Bentley and uh, Volkswagen as well as the Mercedes, Maserati. And, and we distribute to over 100 dealers in China. We, ha we are the um, finished vehicle logistic department. Right now, not only we import cars, but also we export cars. We, have a, we are seeing a great future in our department. I'd like to talk about two aspects. First one, uh, besides the export, we also touch upon Belt and Road Initiative. For export, we are the newcomer. As till now, as of now, we only worked with uh, several, a few partners. Last December, we did uh, five, export five vehicles. And, and also uh, there are uh, around 300 for February, and then next is 150. So together we will export to Philippines around 1,000 vehicles. Philippines, the market is a very good, important market for us, and uh, the feedback is very good. Besides Philippines, we have received offers from other markets as well. So. Definitely, we are seeing great demand there. And also, besides existing models, we are planning other new, we are sourcing other new models, so to speak. So if we are testing water in the Philippine market. I think when it compares to import logistics, export is a little easier. Like what uh, the JC has said, we usually at um, utilize the price of FOB. We don't have to be responsible for the arrangement of uh, vessels. Uh, and um, unlike, unlike uh, importation, where we have to get vehicles from three ports, when export, we only have to move the vehicles from the factories to one uh, port. So it was it's quite smoother. And also, we don't have a custom inspections, commercial inspections. But of course, in the future, maybe the, the customers and also commercial inspection will, will combine to one. I know we, they've already uh, removed that, uh, removed that their titles. They will soon be included, integrated. But now, still, the customer clearance is faster because the customers uh, help to facilitate export, so that they won't have. Uh, tax addition, and they won't have a, a double checking on the price. However, there are also additional actions we need to take because we have to apply for the place of provenance, which we have to source from the local commercial inspection bureau. And also, because for, Filip for the Filipino market, they have a tax advantage or the tax rebate to uh, China. So we have to provide such a place of origin, place of prominence, such cert, so that they can give the tax favorable tax policy to us. So we stand a chance, we stand a good uh, advantage over the um, cars imported from European countries. And also we have a tax rebate uh, for our export. 
of course, they have a list of all the procedures we had to go through um, to apply and to verify, including FAPIAO and uh, contracts. All of the documentation has to be consistent. So we have to do a lot of work. Currently, another question is that we don't have a good system to support that. We uh, do it quite manually, like oh, via Excel or email. So uh, in, the, in, in the future, we would like to develop a system. We can't really duplicate the importation system, the automated system, too, for export use. So we have to develop a new one. Yeah. So this takes some time. Also, for export, uh, after a period of um, uh, action and practice, we think that the procedure is relatively simpler. And also, we don't have to negotiate with the government that much. So I think it's a great potential. Actually, I talked with Madame from uh, um, BMW Brilliance. The important point, besides the system and a procedure for export, another issue is whether we can make money. For Philippines, because they have a tax cut, so we made we can make profit. However, if we export to European countries or markets that are without a tax cut, then we will, in contrast, make loss. So whether it's, it is feasible, we have to do feasibility uh, planning or uh, evaluation country by country. Some countries from Middle East and South Asia, uh, South, South Africa, and as well as uh, Brazil have uh, getting contact with us. Also, there are companies from Amer uh, North America. And we found that, first of all, we have a in discrepancy in terms of requirement, for example, what kind of plates or what kind of uh, stickers we have, uh, and also the requirement for parts and also qualification certification, as well as the local uh, local pricing. Um, so when we do our business case, we found that really definitely we can't make any money, so we can't do that. Uh, yeah, Madan is nodding his head. Uh, yeah, that's um, the situation of ex exportation. I think, uh, uh, Chairman Ma, I think we see great potential in exportation. We feel that it is uh, very promising because so many p countries are, are coming to us, and made in China is really being well recognized in in the, around the world. Not only from developing countries, but also from developed countries. So, I strongly hope, feel that we should be optimistic. This is an uh, export. So uh, let's briefly touch upon, let me briefly touch on Bell and Rural Initiative and what we have done as a company. Like uh, Prof. John has said, we have some concern regarding the rebate and uh, the uh, after a while, if the rebate or the grants has been cut, then how can we continue? And also, we are testing water. First of all, of course, Volkswagen definitely plays quality as for, at first, a second as uh, cost, third, how smooth the procedures. For example, the inland ones, such as uh, uh, the Chongqing and Chengdu, um, they have yet to a, it's experienced a lot, a large volume of uh, these finished vehicles. So whether we can do it very smoothly, we did uh, some test uh, volume, test batches through Chongqing. The first batch was not very good; it was a uh, uh, quite cumbersome, and it was quite expensive. For the second batch and third batch, the whole procedure was much smoother. So. I understand that uh, the government agencies were becoming more cooperative. For tax cut, we have to have our international partners to discuss with the local government. They Then they give us a quote. So we can't do much about it. But still, uh, the concern is what will happen in the future. 
and also for uh, for Chen, Chengdu, the Chongqing government and Chengdu government are both very supportive. But I, I don't know what will change after a new batch of uh, a new office comes into place. Whether the next government will support us. I'm not talking about the, the central government. I'm talking about the local government. Whether the next uh, yeah office will really support us. Well, of course, um, the, the German side are also participating in the tendering. We still have to compare with the uh, sea ferry logistic cost because we have to sell all these vehicles to the 4S shops. So if railway um, transportation is more expensive, then we can't afford it. Of course, by, by railway, we can cut short two weeks. However, compared with time, we place more importance to the cost. So if uh, the German tendering uh, for the railway, uh, if, the co if the cost can come down to as uh, cheap as sea ferry, then we definitely will look at the railway routes. So this is my report. Thank you very much. Good afternoon. I'm, I'm from the uh, uh, the, the logistic company side. These are my clients. Uh, like I said in the morning, I participated in the morning uh, in the meeting uh, f for the first time. I, I should have come earlier. Just now, Prof. John said, uh, "How can we look at CR Express in the new age?" Also, just now, some of the questions being posed by the OEMs. I think at the start. So the CR Express started in Chongqing. Actually, the mayor of Chongqing, Huang Jifan, had did a calculation. The, for the from if the factory shifts from Shenzhen to Chongqing, um, how can we calculate the how can we save in terms of the logistics cost? Huang Jifan said that they want to reduce the cost even. Huang Jifan told said that for the for HP's warehouse in Netherlands, that was uh, over 4,000 USD. But if we, so according to HP's requirement, the logistic cost had to be kept the same. Well, we actually, our cost was uh, much more expensive. And also, all the real roads didn't have confidence to that. HP would willing to pay 4,500. So Huang said, if you go through C, go by C, you have to take one month extra. So uh, your your uh, the the laptop uh, warehousing cost uh, will increase by 7,000. So we can give you as a government grant. After seven years of. Uh, Operation, the cost has come down to seven thousand. So more and more countries began to realize. More and more companies began to realize that it is a feasible thing. And uh, I briefly touched in, uh, in the mornings. We can see the Belarus, Russia, and Mongolia, and other countries where this uh, CI Express goes through. We have signed a memorandum and agreement last April as as a result for the high summit bell and road high summit uh, high, high level summit so also we had a meeting this year to talk about some of the detail and practical issues just now um, many people have touched upon the Congestion issue in Mala for CR Express because of the rapid development. Because the European region didn't expect such a rapid development, we had a tremendous growth. In 2011, we only had dispatched 11 trains in a year. Second year, uh, it went to 
42, equal one got 42, and uh, the third year was 80. As of 2017, we hit, we, we crossed over 3,000 uh, trips benchmark. So the pressure to them, it's great. You know, if you go abroad and take a look, you know that they have to take a rest. They, are, they can't work over time. They can't work, uh, you know, 24 hours 7. And also, really, the capacity of the railway and also the, the capacity of their direction and, and management is uh, substandard. We have come to notice that in China and has the, the road out from Chongqing to Kazakhstan, then from Kazakhstan to Belarus, are all about 4,000 kilometers, together around 10,000 kilometers. We have a consistent direction, given direct consistent orders, but when it goes out into the European uh, regions, it, it's definitely free. Uh, it's definitely a free market with uh, different uh, operators working together. So there was not a very good no, and a consistent collaboration. When my car arrives, I can't take your goods away. So the car has to, the train has to be stopped there and uh, sit idle. And starting from a year of from last year, we have come noticed in this issue. We have explored some new routes. So we have um, opened three channels uh, to uh, Ali and also to the east to Manchuri. So we have three ports, um, and almost all of this um, cargo is concentrated in just one port, and that has put a lot of burden on this port. And we've taken a look, and we feel that they have limited capacity. Um, and 150 kilometers to the north, um, and there are a, another port, and then there is another port in the um, proximity to this place that is possible. Um, and also recently, Russia has proposed another route, so from Poland to. Ukraine and then to Czech Republic, it is all feasible and we are looking into this in the next step. There is another new port, uh, Chemilovka, that we have uh, investigated. Um, if this is feasible, then I think we can resolve the problem of limited capacity of um, our route. In addition, CR Express is using newer technology. One technology that we're using is container tracking. So we have installed GPS trackers on the container so we can track the container. Um, that's one model. Um, another model is to add electronic lock also with GPS functions. So we can provide real-time location of the containers to our clients. Um, so that means we're improving the level of service we're providing. And also in collaboration with countries along the Belt and Road, um, after we have signed agreements with seven countries, uh, we have formed a, jo a joint working group. And underneath that working group, we have two expert groups. One is in charge of optimizing the um, transportation efficiency. The other expert group is about information coordination. And their main task is to um, ensure that the whole journey can be electronic. Uh, can use electronic and digital technology. We have already made some progress over there. So now, in between these railways, um, information exchange is already taking place. So after uh, the train leaves uh, China, then the information uh, reaches Poland, and then after it reaches Poland, the information will reach Kazakhstan. So the next station can get ready in advance, so that's one aspect. Another thing is that together with customs and in those inspection bureaus in countries along the way, uh, we would like them to be pre-informed so that the customs um, could notify other customs, um, which will improve the efficiency of customs clearance and reduce the amount of time the cargo will have to stop at certain customs at certain port. So from inland China to um, to Poland, um, I think 10 days is quite feasible. 
So, on one hand, we would like to provide um, more stable services. Uh, we also hope that more cargoes could go through this route. Um, and I'm sure that some of the speakers have already mentioned this. There are actually more cargoes being transported to Europe, but there are much less, um, less than one third, that will come back to China. So the ratio between in outbound and inbound is not one versus two. I think it's even less than one versus three. Um, and those in the logistics industry know very well that this is the greatest source of the cost. Um, so now we're trying to think of a way to make uh, the level of outbound and inbound cargo more balanced. Um, in Europe, there are a lot of cars that uh, want to come to China. Um, but they just go to the port, um, they are transported by sea. And one thing that I'm really curious about is why is nobody um, transporting them by railway? Um, because Wuhan and Chongqing and Chengdu have all become uh, the important port for for automotive. I think there are mainly two reasons. First of all, and also the most important one, is the cost of transportation. The other thing is the service quality provided by CR Express. So what ex expectations do you have? Or uh, what complaint do you have about our current model? And also, do you have any concern about the procedures with inland um, transport? Maybe that's some of the concerns that our clients have that um, prevent them from using our services more. Um, but I think CR Express is another very good model in addition to its transportation by sea and by air. And I hope that you, I can gain your trust. Thank you very much. Good afternoon. I'm from Chengdu Railway Bureau. And we have recently rebranded and renamed. I would like to thank the organizer for giving me this opportunity to come here and to talk about um, what we think. Railway is an eco-friendly way of transportation that can transport large amount of cargoes. In the recent years, um, China has been deepening its reform in railway, and railway has played an important, an even more important role in international automotive logistics. Um, Chengdu office is one of the 18th offices underneath the um, headquarters, and we are in charge of Sichuan, Chongqing, Hunan province, and some part of Hubei province. Because we are in responsible for Chengdu cluster as well as Chongqing cluster, which are the largest, one of the largest um, manufacturing clusters for the OE, for automotive industry, and also it is in these two provinces that we see growing consumption of um, vehicles, which is why the import and export of uh, vehicle as well as parts has been growing very fast based on our statistics. In terms of domestic transportation, we have been coordinating um, closely with relevant authorities and developing um, railway um, transportation of vehicles. Uh, last year, in Chengdu office, um, close to 800,000 vehicles were transported in this way, um, and we helped ship um, more um, parts. And we have shipped 4,200 containers up by close to 50%. And with a GB1985 standard that has been um, promoted, we believe that um, there would be more shift um, to railway. So in the future, railway will need to take on more um, workload from the transportation of automotive. And also in terms of import and export, as Mr. Zhong mentioned, Chongqing is one of the earliest, one of the first cities where CR Express was opened. That was in 2011. And in 2008, uh, the first proposal um, for CR Express between Chongqing and Europe was um, drafted. So from the drafting of the proposal to the implementation of this plan to last year, um, when 650 trains um, finished their journey, we saw remarkable growth over the past few years. From 2016 to 2017, um, Chongqing 
ranked number one in terms of the trains um, that it have operated for CR Express last year. The number exceeded 800. Um, so it so happens that the railway of Chengdu and Chongqing fall um, within our ob ob obligation. Um, in two years, in the last two years, um, almost half of the trains under CR Express are being operated here. Um, so we can say for sure that um, railways developing very fast in those two cities. And last year, uh, vehicles imported and exported um, th through um, CR Express reached 550 containers. With the development of um, the parallel import port in Chongqing and Chengdu, the growth is even faster. Last year, um, the, trans, uh, the, uh, the train from uh, Gaint, Belgium, to Chengdu for Volvo has uh, kick-started. Um, this includes also Chang'an um, and its transport to overseas facilities. The transport of its vehicles and also, as well as the parts has also been growing. So now the automotive logistics channel we have created um, mainly include a few factors. Um, so first of all is the westward um, railway that connects um, Chengdu and Chongqing with Europe. That's a major channel. Another is to connect to Shanghai and the seaport so that we can also um, export to northeastern Asia and, Aust and also Australia. Another channel we're building is the South word channel. So by going through um, the ocean or the sea in the south part of China, we can reach Singapore, ASEAN. And we are in the process of construction and building this channel. So with the improvement of the railway network in western China, in the next uh, three to five years, or even five to seven years, um, I think the channel from Chengdu uh, to uh, Yunnan province and then to Thailand and then to the Pacific, to Middle East or even North Africa will also be ready and established. So in this sense, we have created a three-dimensional international logistics um, network. All of these, um, after they have been in operation in sync, will be adequate to serve um, OEMs um, as well as the consumption of vehicles in this region. Another point is that we are proactively creating multi-model transport, especially the planning of um, specific joints. We think that multimodal transport is the future um, that we need to focus on. Um, railway, um, sea transport, and air um, transport all have their own advantages. In order to better serve our clients, um, it's very important to combine the advantages of all these different um, ways of transport together. Um, of course, we cannot be the dominant player here, which is why we are working closely with other authorities in Chengdu and uh, Chongqing to serve the manufacturers in those two regions. Let me give you an example. In Chengdu, it is building a second airport in addition to Tianliu, uh, Zhuangliu Airport. Another new airport called Tianfu is being built. Uh, we are coordinating with um, local authorities so that um, railway, uh, uh, there could be two railways that connect to the airport so that this could become a hub for multimodal transport. Um, three to five years later, we will see the emergence of China's highway or a railway um, network. Um, so after China's railway network takes um, its preliminary form, take Western China as an example. 
from there could be a four hour um, within arrival circle, um, including Chengdu and other provinces, so that cargoes can be uh, delivered uh, more efficiently and also more punctually. Um, and also by combining this with airport, we can um, create a new transport model uh, in order to adapt to the increasing expectation of efficiency. By connecting um, highway, railway, and airport in one single point, um, that means we need to consolidate the services of traditional port. Um, traditionally, um, highway, railway, and airport um, service stations are all scattered. So in the future, automotive um, manufacturers and um, logistics service providers no longer need to think about which one model they need to choose, but instead, in one single point, they can find the answer to their diverse demand. So, so that we can reduce uh, the logistics costs throughout the way. In addition to improving infrastructure, we are also interested in exploring um, some comprehensive service innovation. For example, last year, we had a pilot program um, for CR Express um, for the transport order. So we work together with financial institutions uh, for clients of automotive um, clients. We can offer financial services such as uh, bills of credit, uh, letters of credit, so that um, you can settle ahead of time. Um, and and that reduces the financial um, the capital pressure that clients may face. So for CR Express uh, and also for other international channel we plan to build, we can help reduce the overall costs for the whole industry. And I'm sure that this will bring tangible benefits to our vast users. There are a lot of innovation um, and also a lot of things we can look into. The overall idea is that based on the actual development of China's automotive industry, um, based on the increasing expectation of import and export with upgraded consumption, um, railway is willing and also is capable to provide um, support and to play um, um, an important role in transport. So what we have in mind is to join hands with um, river transport, sea transport, um, and also highway to create a multi-model transport um, that can better serve um, automotive logistics companies. because um, I already did my presentation this morning. Um, so just a brief answer to the question that was raised by Mr. Zhang. Um, so first of all, about um, the declining in subsidies as um, an operation service provider. Um, so this is something we're trying to work on because I'm sure you are all fam very familiar with the features of railway because railway in terms of cost is between um, sea transport and also um, transport by air. So of course we cannot offer more competitive costs compared with um, transport by sea. Um, I think we shouldn't recklessly reduce price and compete on price only. Um, I think what we need to do is to find business models and also clientele that fits um, railway transport. I think automotive um, industry and some cross-border e-commerce um, sector could also be our ideal client because the advantage of um, train is, it's, is that it saves time and also it has some competitiveness in price. So I think this is something we urgently need to do when the subsidies are still in place. So imagine uh, we are a startup company before we burn through the investors' money 
think we need to find our viable business model and after the investor um, capital has been completed, we need to give them an answer about how we want to go ahead and operate this market. Um, as, as I think it's the same logic um, behind the move to build airports in a lot of places because the airport is only a platform. We need to think about what we want to do with these airports because there are not so many airports in China that are profitable. A lot of other airports are still losing money. I think it's the same for the railway. We need to find a feasible business, um, business model. I see that Vivian and uh, sitting down there, uh, the U.S. railway is one of the world's best um, railway network for cargo transport. It gives us really um, an insight into what's suitable, what um, car, uh, railway transport is suitable for. Another issue is that different from sea transport, um, between the port there is public, there is um, international sea. Um, there is no restriction of local law and regulation, but because the railway has to go through the land and all of the land has already been claimed. The only exception, perhaps, is the Antarctica. So given these factor, different countries have different requirements for customs and also for ins inspection. Let me give you an example. Last year, I talked with Poland government, and we talked about how we can use the Belt and Road Initiative, and they told me a joke um, that China and Russia are bullying them. I said, why do you say that? He said, this is because Russia doesn't allow recently butchered beef to go through um, go through the EU. And they only process the, the, the beer, uh, the beef, meat, and uh, into a small package to go through the, uh, the Russia border. But for Chinese, uh, for Chinese policies, after the uh, beef butchered, the tax is very low. And however, when after it processed, then you go, the tax goes to up to twenty percent. So. I end up losing my job, uh, losing my business. Right? So these are the, some of the concerns the, facing the clients we worked, uh, not only uh, smaller clients, but also big companies. Together, they can't have um, um, ways to deal with them, uh, deal with the, the issues themselves. So we need a bigger platform, we need a bigger protocol or agreements to facilitate such um, um, business collaboration. And thirdly, we can see that there is a great stratification of the cl clients uh, work using the railways. Uh, on the one side are the um, commodity modifiers, uh, buyers and also the automotive OEMs. Then on the other end are the very small clients with daily products. So they have to group together to fill, in order to fill one container. So so now they come to the question one is control. Who has the voice? And second, um, the smaller com companies have to uh, sought, seek, seek the um, endorsement of the association so that they can better utilize the platform of railway. Otherwise, they uh, the client, the small client, can't have uh, negotiating power, and also the platform, the carrier itself, are not interested in the clients. So, with the endorsement of the association, we can talk more fairly with smaller clients. We can't ditch these clients anyway. So, hopefully, we can uh, go. Uh, we can rely on the power of association and organization so that they can form a consortium of all the smaller clients for them to open a new market so that they can also become a very valuable source of clients to us and we can sustainably develop this European market. Thank you very much. Because um, uh, many uh, the uh, experts are separated into OEMs and also into logistics providers, especially the railway providers. The association has already done such a conference in uh, more than ten in, by more than ten years. Last year we began this conference here. Um, last year, we felt that we yet are yet to have a comprehensive plan for this um, finished car export and import. However, uh, after, over the past two years, I can see many players have tried, and also 
I heard someone from the railway uh, sector saying, why do we stick to the uh, sea ferry? But we, we know that the volume is quite constant. And also, some this strategic point in the uh, sea ferry routes, such as the Delta, the Yangtze River Delta region, also, also the Pearl River Delta Sand are the major consumption of vehicles. So let's forget about cost first. Let's look at about time. This, the choice of this, these locations are actually um, quite reasonable. So we can't see a huge change in terms of the volume going through railway in a near future. So in terms of CR Express, I think the more you can, the, the, the things you can do is to look more on the parts manufacturers, because actually we have both way traffic. Especially if we go to Europe, we can carry back a large quantity of parts. Each year we see such um, volume. But for OEM, when it comes to export, as far as the data last year goes, for example, the uh, the Roro, they have already started in the direct operation of uh, export. Just now, when we also touch upon the story of uh, Philippines, they also have a in, in they have a station Yantai, where the uh, Chevrolet and also the BMW, uh, dire uh, sorry, Volkswagen are directly shipped to Philippines uh, by Roro to to keep the volume there. So my suggestion is that based on the Belt and Road Initiative, I think we need to provide more alternatives to make the parts clients more interest because they are more sensitive to the time saving. They like time saving more instead of the OEMs, I guess. And um, we can see the new direction or new development in the export. For example, the commercial new energy vehicle, for example, the buses, we are clearly seeing the effort in promoting them to uh, go abroad. Uh, but it's difficult to put them in the container and go through railway. So they, they are very large volume. So whether we can come up with a very new uh, solutions or whether CI Express has to go by containers, I'm not so sure. But we can see a very steady and stable uh, export trend for commercial new energy vehicle compared with uh, passenger uh, finished cars. So I think if we think along this line, whether it's a finished vehicle for the new energy vehicle or whether it's KDs, I think uh, it's a, maybe it's a better, it's more pragmatic and forward looking when you select clients. Because all the routes, air, sea, land, are competing um, among them, uh, themselves for these resources. So we need to see whether they can put in a really uh, good effort in think, think about new solutions rather than rely on just one method. Well, for domestically, we know that after standardization is done, how can we operate for the automotive logistics? We know that the overall cost, whether it, in terms of uh, its uh, throughput capacity or cost, we still have room for optimization. As, a, as the association CLP, we don't have um, a presentation in terms of the um, study results. But actually, we look very much into the the uh, throughput efficiency, because we also are in charge of uh, uh, cold chain um, and express delivery. So I don't really talk about the efficiency to them, to because we our efficiency is just not there for vehicle 
an average is only run, only runs 7,000, 6,000, 7,000 kilometers. It is even shorter than a taxi driver who, who would have had covered. So in the future, I am strongly for the combined transportation and intercity, intracity. Uh, for example, uh, also combining the, the the trunk roads with the peripheral roads. I have not studied much on the OEM side, whether it's bidding or tendering, because many people are thinking that the cost is very high. So I began to take notice. We've seen that actually this industry is kind of segregated by routes. Um, if a con customer has these routes, then me meaning that they know that when they have return trips, they can carry some parts back, that thus reducing this cost. However, um, maybe can they can think about how to utilize the peripheral routes and also OEM companies. They restrict the logistic companies from switching or um, swapping the vehicles. But when you receive your parcels, right, when you buy the things, you can't expect the same delivery man running from Beijing to Shanghai to deliver it uh, to you by hand, isn't it? So you should, ha you should allow the logistics providers to optimize their operations part by part, whether it's a long haul, whether it's a, a trunk road, whether it's a small road. They should allocate the most efficient res resources so as to improve their efficiency. So if we can increase the efficiency from maybe running 7,000 kilometers to 10,000 kilometers, that improves the efficiency and brings down the cost. So we will advocate on that in the future and uh, believe for import and export that goes uh, the same. And I think the, the picture in the future will be much brighter. Thank you. So just now, all the eight experts have uh, talked about the uh, their situations in line with the Belt and Road Initiative, as well as the import and export. Besides that, also the, in, the railway experts have talked about some um, the, the the network expansion. We can see that uh, the outlook is bright. And uh, especially people said, previously we only uh, did import, but we have already begun to see an uh, increase in the export, so we are getting into the export. And also for the uh, exper uh, logistic companies, they talked about how to expand westwards. Uh, but the, the OEMs still talk about sea ways. And for example, BYD talked about 240 cities. However, they still focus on Shanghai, Qingdao, Shenzhen, and other ports. Maybe China, uh, maybe the Central Asian country didn't import BYD, or maybe most of them, most of the BYD cars go through Seaway. That gives us a question. So when uh, the structure the, of industry um, gets reshuffled. For example, the parts cannot be assembled in just one country. Because of time limit, can we have a very to the point question, a short and sweet answer to the second question? So what, especially for the four, four OEMs, what are the major issues of logistics in the international um, tra transportation? So can, can we know whether you have actually utilized the, the railway routes for the four OEMs? Uh, so 
because these two parties represent different interests, so definitely we need to instigate some discussions and arguments, right? So uh, we can see uh, if may maybe you didn't, you never use railway because the service is not good, and some. As Bo just now, just now said that we dare not use it. It's not that we don't want to use it. We are, we are afraid, we're concerned about the inefficiency of the local government. I think we need to appreciate that. Let's not only talk about railway. Let's talk about uh, that. That's con that concerns other uh, routes as well. So, what are the key issues facing our parts or OEMs? Let's start from her of JAC as well. Okay, so just now I I deviate from the topic a little bit. Actually, we have been working with the railway routes along the way. For example, our Kazakhstan project was signed at a witness of Premier Li Keqiang. We are trying our best to operate this project, and each month we have 60 to 70 containers going through to the country and we sometimes we can chart charter uh, the whole train also we have another project with Russia which utilized railway route and later on in the future maybe we can use Kazakhstan as a basic point the hub in Central Asia so to set up the factory to um, create a radius of uh, coverage in Asia, Central Asia but we can encounter a problem, for example, taking Russian as a, as a Russian as a market. We have a JV there. We have a controlling stake. But at the same time, we are we need to do DDP. That is to do direct customer clearance for our JV. But we feel that the international logistic companies in China didn't provide a very good solution, a proposal to us. This is something we need. Also, the second thing is that during railway operation, the service recommended by the logistic companies Actually, we've seen many top players, such as CR Express, such, such as China Railway, coming to us here in the meeting. We really like to work with the main trunks, main road. For example, uh, when, we, when, when we work with a railway operation, we like to work with these uh, direct, direct uh, stakeholders. When we go to see, we like to work with port directly. So I really like to work with, uh, for example, CR Express directly. However, for the past few years, we only go through intermediaries. Oh, sorry, uh, because time constraint, I want, let, let's, let me pose you another question. Just now you were saying and you don't use agency anymore. You work directly with logistics. Go, go to government, go to port. You didn't say you go to um, railway, right? So who did you approach when you work with railway? For JAC, because we are situated in Hefei, it's the middle part of China. It's a kind of a, a, a dilemma for us because we have limited choice when Hefei is, when we are in Hefei. The companies that has relations with the railway are either in Beijing or Shanghai. So uh, it's difficult for us to get in touch with the players. So we can only get in, work with uh, intermediaries. So we don't get very good pricing that impede our progress, uh, limits our choice. OK, this is the question. OK, sure. So you can go directly approach to Mr. John of CR Express. For us, uh, we have similar issues for BYD, for the passenger export, passenger car export base is in Xi'an. You know, Xi'an is far away from a port. So the inland transport cost is very hefty. We, you, uh, 
usually go through by, via KD parts. We explored, uh, for example, container uh, direct transport or com combined transport. However, the costs are not very good, still very high. So is there any optimized uh, operation? Operation plan. If we give, deliver the parts to you, you in charge. Of, you help us for the car packaging, and also the inland transport within China, and also the re recover or recycle of the packaging materials. Do you have a like a total solution for us? We will be very appreciative to the uh, to to you for supporting companies like us. So you have need a total solution. I see. Yeah, in our case, um, we are getting round about 10% of our inbound volume uh, via train. So I think we had the topic before. It's not just the suppliers. Uh, of course, we are also using um, the train as an inbound. Uh, and this just developed uh, in the last years. But uh, of course, mainly for parts where we don't want to have uh, a high inventory, or also for replacement where you can, with a proper forecast, even avoid uh, more expensive uh, airplane transportation. So these are for us um, the usual solutions. I, I, right now, I would also not see that this for inbound um, goes uh, a little bit higher because uh, sea freight is just simply better in terms of pricing. So and for the outbound, uh, as I just said, yeah, for export, um, what we are exporting so far, the 1,000 cars per year, it's very low. Um, so that's why um, also I think the train transportation is for us right now not, not beneficial. This might change in the future. Yeah. However, or it, it depends how this business will develop in the next years. And uh, I think for the domestic uh, train outbound, I can just agree. Um, I mean, we have there also around about 10% of the whole outbound of Finnish cars goes via uh, train, so much less than vessel or uh, or by truck, uh, depending on the cost situation. So it's not uh, that much competitive right now. So for Volkswagen, import and export. Um, so just now, um, I've talked about a little bit, so whether we will use railway to import in Western China because we divide uh, the country in different parts. So in addition, uh, except Western China, other regions are closer to the seaport. So we will still go with sea freight um, with the only exception of Western China. We're um, thinking about using railway for um, Western China. So one thing is cost. Um, so even for Western China, we are still using um, sea freight. Um, um, the cargo will be shipped to the port in eastern China and then shipped inland to western China. In terms of quality, we've noticed that there are some countries along the road, and maybe because of terrorist attacks, uh, they have opened our container and they have stolen some of our parts. So there are some, I think, uh, Throughout the um, CR Express, there are still some safety concerns. Uh, that's for the first batch. And when, the, when we do it the second time, um, there uh, maybe I don't know if it's because the container is not sealed properly. Um, we see that there is some dirt. Um, and also, how many vehicles you can put in one container. So right now, for a 40 um, container, we put in two uh, vehicles. If we use a rack, then we can fit in four smaller vehicles and then two larger vehicles. But um, quality-wise, is it reliable to use a rack? We still need to run some tests. And also, we have heard that um, there are cases where the rack uh, falls over and then hurting the car. So um, quality and also safety are two very important considerations for us. Another thing is um, procedure or the process, similar to what the three other um, panelists have mentioned. Um, you need to have um, solutions. Um, so at the starting point, also at the de destination. So in Germany, um, 
there are two places that we mainly uh, load and unload. So how we go from the railway station to our final destination, to our final facility, we still need to go through highway or the road. Um, and even when we go through the railway, when we go back to domestic China, for example, we reach Xi'an, and after we unload at the railway station, we still need to use um, the truck for the last mile transportation. If we find railway, then for the last mile, we still need to find another third-party logistics service provider. So that's some of the major concerns we have. Uh, that's for import. Um, for export, it is about where the destination market is. Um, well, if it's something, some country like the Philippines, I don't think you can get there by railway. Um, so maybe some inland markets, we can consider it. Another thing I want to ask you is, uh, what is what about parts? So you mentioned um, the vehicle. What about the import and export of part? So we are using. So you're saying you can consider using CR Express for uh, the transport of part? Yes. So wait a second. After they finish this round of uh, sharing, I will open the floor to questions. So uh, a few concerns um, have already been addressed. So as someone representing CR Express, we're also well aware of the issues we have. Um, I don't think these are issues that cannot be overcome. I think they can be solved. And one thing I forgot to mention is that um, this morning, and also uh, in this morning, and also some of the reports, we saw the case of Iran. Uh, last November, uh, China Railway, Pakistan Railway, um, Pakistan Railway held a conference, a three-day conference, and we agreed upon a very favorable price. So if you need to transport from Shanghai, uh, from, from China to Iran, um, right now the price has been cut by half. So if you have any business going to Iran, uh, feel free to approach us. So I think one thing that has been mentioned, uh, cost, quality, and the procedure. So cost-wise, um, for Western to from Western China to Russia to Eastern Europe and to Central Asia, I have been to a lot of these countries and I have talked with the railway bureaus there. Um, I don't think the cost um, of railway transport is necessarily that much higher than sea freight. Um, and also, I think the economy of scale is very obvious. Um, after we reach a critical point, I think um, go after we reach that point, the cost will go down substantially. So I think uh, regarding quality, um, based on what we have observed, based on our situation in Chengdu and Chongqing, Last year, we had 500 to 600 containers of vehicles coming in from Europe. Of course, within the containers, different suppliers may have different ways of fitting in. Some have fit in two, three, or even four vehicles. Um, I think there are a lot of professional solutions um, for loading. Um, efficiency and also capacity um, will be further improved. I think Mr. Zhong is the expert on um, the quality issue or the safety issue throughout the journey. We have insurance products, so for um, some unlikely events that result in the damage of cargo, we have insurance to safeguard the interests of our clients. And the last point about the procedure, I think for any way of transport, it's difficult uh, for you to um, have choose just one model of transport throughout the way, even when you go with sea freight after the cargo reach the port, you still have to uh, switch to uh, highway transport or uh, road transport, and that is why multi-model transport is very necessary for international uh, transport. In Chengdu and Chongqing, as I mentioned earlier, we are working closely with local government to create a platform, a service platform for international multi-mod 
multi-model multi uh, transport to serve Chengdu and Chongqing um, so to provide uh, a one-stop solution. So for example, in one point, um, in one location, um, all of these different mo models of transport can be aggregated here. And so that the client no longer needs to go between different suppliers. We are able to provide one-stop solutions, and that's why we are talking together with um, some local companies in Chengdu, some IT companies. In the future, I believe we can offer um, some comprehensive one-stop solutions. Our plan is that in Nongchuanyi district, in the next three to five years, we will set up two large railway-based automotive logistic base, and um, this base will be equipped with um, delivery, import and export, um, all these different capacities, and by having, by aggregating all of this, then the, the functions of the OEMs will be better supported, and they will be given better services. And um, right now, we're working together with local governments and uh, related companies to solve this. Um, I'm sure that in the future, there will definitely be um, this one-stop solution service providers. So just two more things to address uh, regarding uh, safety concern and also service quality that you mentioned. Indeed, safety is a concern because, um, as I mentioned earlier, railway passes through um, a lot of land of different countries. So when we did um, our test, um, indeed, there was a loss of cargo or damage to cargo. But after running tests on multiple um, routes, we have chosen, relatively speaking, safer route. So at least um, for the routes that we have chosen, the probability of loss of cargo is extremely low. I wouldn't say zero, but the probability is very low. Um, so as an operator of logistics, we have to ensure the safety of the client's cargo. Otherwise, the service we're providing is basically nothing. It's non-existent. Right now, we don't have the ability to solve all of the problems we may encounter overseas. But through testing and through comparison, we can find suitable route. So it's just like when we go to middle um, Central Asia, if we take the straight line, you may go through seven to eight countries. Theoretically, this uh, would take at least time. But actually, if you take a little bit detour through Hazakistan, it takes even less time. Um, and also, speaking of service, we now have the ability to provide door-to-door -door service. Uh, Mr. Wei also mentioned that it's impossible for international shipping to use only one model of transport. But as a platform operator, we can provide a packaged deal. We can help you integrate um, different suppliers, and we can help you integrate customs clearance customs declaration, and also we can help you integrate different forms of transport. So from the client's point of view, you can enjoy door-to-door -door service. So I think these are what we can promise to you, not just me, but also several other platforms. Um, after you try our service, I'm sure that we will gain your trust. So just now we've talked about um, whether to use railway or not. Um, I have talked with a lot of companies. I think that um, those who choose to use railway um, do so because they want to try it out. Um, I think a lot of people are like that. They want to try it out. Uh, there are another type of users that use railway because they have to. Um, other modes of transportation cannot deliver what they're looking for. But what I would like to remind you is 
For cities like Chengdu and Chongqing, they already have the qualifications for import and export. They have the qualification to do import and export of finished vehicles. But even in coastal cities, it's not, it's not just Dalian, Tianjin, Shanghai, Guangzhou. It's not these four cities alone. Um, they're not the only ones who have the qualifications. There are many other ports that also have the qualifications. Uh, in terms of the quantity of import and export, of course, it is those traditional port cities that have um, been the dominant player. So I think auto all automotive logistics is not just about how you transport the vehicle, because as a professional service, it needs a lot of supporting services, a lot of supporting facilities. For example, last year, one thing we often talked about is that uh, yesterday China changes policy regarding um, the sales and management of the cars. The system, uh, the 4S store system, has also been changed. Um, and if we go abroad, we notice that not all seaports are handling the automotive business. And for those that do, they will have a lot of supporting um, capabilities. They will have clusters of these industries. So when you export um, a car to smaller and immature market, maybe you don't have this demand, but after the scale increases, um, these professional services will be a, a key to whether your clients will choose you. It's not just simply a matter of cost. So just now Mr. Wei said that in Longquan Yi district, there will be a, a platform um, for automotive logistics. I think this is the future trend. Um, if you really want to do it, then do it well. So I think his presence here um, represents his sincerity. So just now, uh, we have heard from our guests um, in the interests of time. So just now, I think uh, someone raised a question. Uh, we will hear from you first. Um, really, uh, could you please let me know who you are? I actually have two titles. One is, um, I'm from Taiwan. I have logistics background, and later I worked in mainland China. And also, I'm a Chinese representative of US port. So I'm really glad that today we hear about subsidies being brought up. Of course, right now, um, because China is going through promotion, so there is subsidy, but Europe and the US think that um, subsidy is not necessary or it's not something that a free market should provide. And just now you also mentioned the, the letter of credit. For sea freight, there's definitely the letter of credit. Um, so in real way, mostly you're dealing with big clients, um, but that's completely different from the policy of the Chinese government. The Chinese government is trying to in promote um, innovation uh, of more people in the future, there will be more small, medium-sized companies that emerge in China. I have a lot of experience with international business, and for CIS country, for South American countries, when I talk to them and trying to promote railway service to them, uh, every I seldom hear from them. So. So I think there's a lot of um, kind, there's it's it's quite debatable um, about the non so-called non-fuel competition um, for better development in the future. Maybe we should allow them to fail because we like to give favor to big companies, but. China's future lies in small and medium-sized companies because their products are getting more valuable. I see that uh, we hear about different models of, of shipment. I think that should be the future um, that we go into. Thank you. So you don't really have a question. It's just I want to share with you what you think. Um, is there some, someone up there who want to 
uh, say something or add something. Okay, um, if not, then I will. Um, so regarding subsidy, um, Mr. Jung didn't mention that too much. Um, right now, subsidy will be declined every year. Uh, we will gradually go back to the free market mechanism by improving our service. The information that I've got is that subsidy will be down by 30 percent. So within three to five years, um, there will be no subsidy at all, so that uh, the market is stored, restored to a fair state. And also, as has been mentioned, in order to promote fair market competition, um, because we also understand that railway receives the most favorable treatment, so it's the least fair way of um, transportation. And also for small, medium-sized companies, um, I think one thing that has been very good is that in addition to sharing a container, that is being underway, um, big companies will increasingly connect with these logistics service providers and also promote one-stop logistics service provider. Um, so that means more small, medium-sized companies, they can't go to a railway directly. They have to go through the agency so that they can receive better rates. I think that's a future trend. And in many places, this has already started. Thank you very much. Uh, anyone else? Can I just add about a free trade issue? Uh, my thing as an investor um, is an angel investor of the railway system. That's how I see this. So it is an uh, angel investor. So the government helps build the market, and then the companies take over. So. Um, um, they are all under very strict quota um, to repay this loan because they have basically taken a loan from the government and right now they have to repay 400 million a year. We are from CFL Rinkind. We are one of the sponsors. And I think Richter uh, from Volkswagen, right? Uh, so just now you talked about the rack, um, and actually we produce the rack. So usually two cars fit in one container. Now you can fit in three, four. Um, for SUV, you can fit in three SUVs in one container. Um, we have talked a lot about um, G uh, GB1985 and also the development of uh, transport logistics. One thing you mentioned is the, 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 the last mile. Uh, this is something that we're looking into. So we just uh, established our office in China. So we like to talk with you more um, about it. We have a long history in the US and the UK and uh, Europe, so we can talk about it later on. And he, oh, I'm sorry, uh, uh, I'd like to interrupt. Because the rack loop system has been seven years, used in the seventh year, we also started working on BMW in the U. Uh, and, and the rack system had um, it's a zero damage rate, so it's uh, for high Q. Th thank you very much. Okay, let's uh, exchange our business cards. Yeah, uh, because the rack system was uh, referred by the German HQ. So the main concern is just the quality issue. So we have to have do some test by our QA because the, the road is very long. Uh, let's let's test on the short road. Then we can run on the CR Express. Then secondly, besides the racks, uh, they also mentioned road road. So without using rack. They, you can use the the, ba the the rural thing. So maybe your racking system is uh, uh, intermediate or, or interim solution, but the long for the long run is still for rural in system. From 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 factory, they also use the same solution from uh, from factory to Brahmi. So you know, uh, Matthias, um, you understand the system, right? Okay. Yeah. Mm. <coughs> yeah, I think I understand it even if I'm even if I'm not 
even if I'm not an outbound specialist. Mm -hmm. yeah. But I cannot add something to that. Yeah. Okay. Hi, Owen Timo. 好了,没有了,那就这样啊,时间关系。Okay, so uh, time is up, so we are looking forward more to the, the more uh, personal interaction with the, all the experts. So I'll summarize the, the points. So facing the technology advancement and also the impact with the globalization, as each of the companies have uh, explored uh, new innovative measures. When it comes to logistics, heading by uh, JAC and uh, other companies. They, OEMs are working, want to work directly with the logistics providers. Small and medium companies uh, still have to work with uh, agencies, but now we are also exploring the counter-taker uh, policies. The also BMW Brilliance are exploring how to optimize the operation and organization So with the further ex expectation on uh, of further reform, we are likely to see the streamlining of uh, customer and inspection and the integration of the two bodies. And also we uh, have a concern on the continuity of policies. So uh, not only at top, top at the central government and also at uh, local government, especially the destination governments. However, um, overall, with the development of a Belt and Road, more, more companies are likely to try the CR Express. Granted, they have issues. Uh, with the rapid expansion and development, the CR Express and a railway uh, operation are becoming more optimized. In they have uh, for, they have uh, uh, putting effort in the information optimization and uh, collaboration between China and uh, other co companies. And uh, actually, Chongqing and Chengdu already account for more than 40 percent to 50 percent of the um, the trains of the total number of trains dispatched. So. Um, this year, more than half will be dispatched from uh, Chongqing and Chengdu. Just now, also, B, uh, uh, BRD said that how can we make optimization in the inland transportation. So Chengdu Railway Bureau have already said that we also have uh, inland, China inland container trains. We may have a westward expansion of the routes. And uh, the, we, we can rely on the OEMs and the parts makers can rely on the combination of sea and the land transportation together. And also we have talked about a new method. So uh, we come to, uh, now if I fly to Chengdu, it's a Shuangliu uh, airport. But next time we may go f fly to Tianfu airport. So in, uh, may, by then, we may experience personally the railway and also airport um, combined transport. So Chengdu is building itself into an international uh, air freight hub combined with the railway capacity, which will be very unique in uh, the world. Also, people talk about cost, then it's uh, Chengdu, also, Chengdu uh, government also mentioned that we don't really have, not only have a high-speed train system, but we also have uh, the, the normal slower train options for it to take into consideration. So for CLP, the association have uh, been working and and also, uh, we have arrived later, and uh, we just participated in this conference. We will participate more actively, because uh, to to answer to the questions to say in terms of safety, a uh, cost and efficiency, we can solve the issues internally. Uh, 
when we, when the goods goes outbound, we also have to make sure that they are safe to make sure that we can have a win-win situation and better collaboration. And so in the future, I think we need to rely on a multi-model uh, transportation to support import and export of uh, um, OEM. And also, we need to rely on K CKD and SKD. Then we rely, have to rely on more uh, consistent information collaboration and uh, innovation on the business model. And we have to work really work together. We uh, co-build and co-discuss the issue. The CI Express mainly had its uh, gateway in the west, east-west. So. Actually, it is a very strategic location, and we will see a lot more potential. So the auto logistics is of great potential. The platform, this conference is a very great platform. So we will see, expecting a great uh, potential for our operation and business in the future.